Okay, it has been a minute, so we are going to be back in order. It's 12.49, and we are back from recess. Before we get started, you may have noticed a change in the head table. Um, I have permission to share this. Alex Axe, the secretary, has tested positive for COVID. So they are returning back to their apartment. They are planning on following on the live stream and continuing to take notes. But in the interim, this person who's maybe been secretary a few times before has agreed to help us out. So our profuse thanks to Linda Denneroff for being the emergency holographic secretary. She, uh, she thought she was getting a year off from this, but I guess not. Okay, so previously on the business meeting, we were on D.13 apology and a uh, amendment by substitution had been made. We have the text of that on the screen. Um, it had not yet received a second. It has been seconded. I'm going to read um, the text as well. Um, and then once I am done reading it, we are probably going to keep it on the second resolution slide um, and ping back to the whereas slide if it sort of seems relevant. Um, this is also truncated slightly for font sizes. So where it says works and writers, um, those are essentially the same lists that you will find in the original document. Um, okay, so whereas, list of works were excluded from the Hugo Award finalist lists and Jiren Zhao, that was probably wrong, was excluded from the Astounding Award finalist list for the 2023 Chengdu Worldcon for unknown reasons, potentially not rooted in the WISPIS Constitution and whereas the published nominated statistics included questionable intermediate results and Whereas we find that the 2023 Hugo Award administrators were unacceptably vague in their stated rationale for these actions, and neither they nor the 2023 Chengdu Worldcon administration offered satisfactory explanations upon the discovery of these irregularities. Be it resolved that the World Science Fiction Society apologizes unreservedly to the nominators and voters of the 2023 Hugo Awards for any fail for any failures in the administration of the 2023 Hugo Awards and the World Science Fiction Society apologizes unreservedly to all nominees, finalists, and winners of the 2023 Hugo Awards for any failures in the administration of the 2023 Hugo Awards as well as any harm which may result from those actions and the World Science Fiction Society specifically and unreservedly apologizes to list of writers slash authors slash creators for their exclusion from the 2023 Hugo Award and or Astounding Award final ballots. That is the item before us. Do you wish to speak to it? Uh, this is an amendment and so by default gets five minutes of debate time um, distributed evenly if there's five total minutes remaining. Um, just barely. Okay. Wish to speak to it? Just to reiterate that I believe we must apologize this year, and I hope this is sufficient to remove everyone's concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Elspeth? I have, and I don't know where I'm supposed to be saying this, I have offered an amendment, in fact, a replacement, because yeah. I know we need to apologize. Okay, so I'm gonna take that as a speech against, because you would, you're saying that you have a different amendment that you wish to offer, so that is a speech against this current amendment. You are, to be clear to the body, this other amendment is not yet before us, that it was simply a speech against because there is another amendment that the member wishes to offer. Thank you. Is there a speech in favor? Seeing none, is there any more speeches against? I begin, next chair, with a couple of questions on pr procedural questions. Kevin Stan, sorry, Kevin Stanley, he, him. 
Uh, am I correct that terminology-wise, the sections of this of this proposal and the proposal it proposes to substitute for, the sections that begin with whereas are considered the preamble, the rest is the resolution proper. Yes. That's, that is correct. I, I ask this because I wish to, the further question is, this being an amendment by substitution, it is one of the places I believe where we are allowed to make first order amendments to the substitute before considering it in replacement of the original proposal. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, next chairperson, I move to strike the entire preamble. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. I'll speak to that. I'm going to state it first. Okay. The amendment before us is to strike the entire preamble, which is this slide. So should the motion be adopted, this entire slide would go away, and the entirety of it would be this slide. As the member noticed, this is in order because although we do not normally allow amendments to amendments, when we have an amend by, amendment by substitution, that is one of the exceptions. The motion has been moved and seconded. Um, just split the remaining time again. Yep. Next chairperson, Kevin Stanley, he, him. Preambles are problematic. Our parliamentary authority actually discourages the use of them. They're not substantive in many ways, but they tend to drive things in a way that you may not want them to be. If we want to apologize, let us just apologize. We don't need to go into why we're apologizing, and we are trample, potentially trampling on areas that we have sent off for discussion or consideration or investigation by other committees, and therefore I think we were better off with simply apologizing. Thank you. Okay. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Seeing none, are there any other speeches in favor? Linda Robinette, she, her. I agree with Kevin Stanley with the addition of any time you have to explain an apology, you have not apologized just flat out apologize. I agree with this amendment to the amendment. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Are you wishing to? Okay, yep. The member was asking to display the text to be deleted that is being displayed. Okay, is there, do, yep. And Louise, she, her. So, if we pass the amend the 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 amendment to the amendment, do the original whereases remain in effect or not? No, the the original whereas. So the the if the Stanley amendment passes, the amendment by substitution would become just this this slide. Should this amendment by substitution pass, then we would vote on the adoption or the other things you decide to do, of that. Should this not pass, then we would be back to the original resolution. Okay. You want me to explain that again? If there, no, I mean, hold on, once again. There's only one presiding officer here, folks. If you have another amendment that you wish to offer, you can, so if it is, knowing what your, what the amendment you wish to offer is, it would be in order once the um, amendment by substitution, which is before us, is done with. And so once we are back to the resolution, either as originally submitted or as amended. Thank you. Yes. Are you, do you have a speech in, uh, against? Okay, are there any other speeches against? Thank you. He, him. While I agree with the general principle that um, preambles um, can cause difficulties, I think in this case where the, the wider world outside of fandom is 
probably somewhat unclear on um, this whole situation. Um, I think in this case the preambles serve a useful purpose in clarifying what has been apologised for, whereas without the preamble, um, the statement um, or the, uh, the apology uh, could be taken to be deliberately and unnecessarily vague. Thank you. That was a speech against, um, and you have a speech in favor? Okay. But now what's in order is a speech in favor. So is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Just so that everybody knows, um, give your badge to the secretary before you speak now, not after new secretary, new rules. Uh, Rafe Richards, he, him, uh, McChesterton, to very briefly reply to the previous speaker. The people to whom we are apologizing know very well what we're apologizing for. This is not a resolution to make a public statement to the world at large. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Mark Richards, he, him. While, uh, while I accept um, Mr. Stanley's uh, explanation for why preambles are not desirable, I think in this case it's necessary. We have made in Ten this version, well, and we made in this version it's sufficiently vague, and I think we need this for the historical record. Okay, time against the amendment has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? How much time is remaining? We have 20 seconds remaining in favor. Okay. Olaf. Lev Rockney, he, him, and uh, I'm bringing a PR perspective to this. I apologize for a living and having the preamble weakens this. We are not explaining, we are just saying, this is bad, we are sorry for it. The preamble is pointing fingers and saying- 10 seconds. Alt. We need, if we are going to apologize, we need to put the apology front and center, no prevarication. Okay. Um, can I get your name instead? Yeah, badge. Okay, that is time in favor has also elapsed, so all debate time has expired. Okay, so we are going to move to a vote on the um, amendment to the amendment by substitution, which is to strike the preamble, which is to strike the entire slide that you now see, all of the whereas is, so that the amendment by substitution would read just the be it resolved, the slide that is currently before you. Is that clear? Okay. All those in favor of the Stanley Amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, and the amendment passes. So what is now before us is the amendment by substitution as amended, which is now just this slide. Okay? Are we, we are out of time. Okay, time on this item has elapsed. So we are going to move to a vote unless there is any privileged item. Yeah, that's a yes. If the formatting is different, that's an editorial revision and we will make things consistent. Okay. Hold on, give me a second. Okay. One moment. Okay. What is given that Ms. Tobar has extended amendment, move to extend debate by two minutes. Okay. It has been moved to extend debate by two minutes. Is there there is a second? All those in favor of extending debate by two minutes, please raise the hand. 
thank you. All those against, thank you. It required a two thirds vote and did not pass. Debate is not extended. So we are going to move to a vote on the amendment by substitution, which is to substitute the originally submitted text of D13 with the text that is on the slide. Are we clear on what the item to be voted on is? Okay, th so the text in the printout is no longer, well, currently not relevant. This is an amendment by substitution. So it is to change from the text in the printed out agenda with the text on the screen, which reads, be it resolved that the World Science Fiction Society apologizes unreservedly to the nominators and voters of the 2023 Hugo Awards for any failures in the administration of the 2023 Hugo Awards. And the World Science Fiction Society apologizes unreservedly to all nominees, finalists, and winners of the 2023 Hugo Awards for any failures in the administration of the 2023 Hugo Awards, as well as any harm which may result from these actions. And the World Science Fiction Society specifically and unreservedly apologizes to, and I will read out this list, RF Kwong, it's going to be wrong, and I'm, a, and I'm sorry. Author of Babel, Kongyan Mu Ming Gu, author of Color the World, Hai Ya, author of Fonggong Temple Pagoda, Neil Gaiman, author and writer for The Sandman, Paul Weimer and Jiran Zhe Zhao for their exclusion from the 2023 Hugo Awards and or Astounding Award final ballots. That is the amendment by substitution that is currently before us. Are we clear? Okay. All those in favor of the amendment by substitution, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. The amendment by substitution passes. Was there any debate time on the underlying item remaining? No. Okay. Am I getting emailed copies? Yes. I will forward you what we have, and it's that minus the last two paragraphs, minus the whereas is. <laughs> Sorry. Linda's not on the business meeting staff email, y'all. Like, because she wasn't on business meeting staff until recently. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll do, okay. Yes. Do you have a privileged item? Okay, it has been moved and seconded to, do, moved and seconded to extend debate by four minutes. This requires a two thirds vote. All those in favor of extending debate, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And the motion does not pass and debate is not extended. So we are back to the underlying D.13 apology as amended. So what we are voting on is the adoption of, oh yeah, okay. Um, what we are voting on is the adoption of D.13 as amended. Are we clear on what is being voted on? Okay. Oh, you're in the PDF instead of the word. I think. Parliamentary inquiry then. Am I in that? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Linda's not a Mac person, and I am, and that causes issues. One moment. Okay, parliamentary inquiry. Next chairperson, um, there she is. That's what I was trying. Uh, is it in order, because even though debate time has expired, is it in order for somebody such as one of the earlier speakers who was foreshadowing an amendment and is standing at the front of the room to introduce an amendment to what is pending? Yes, because the question has not been called. Amendments are still in order. They would just not be debatable as there is no debate time. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? Okay. Thank you to Nick's chair. Thank you to Martin, who we finally figured out what was wrong. Um, I think even as amended. It seems like you're about to make a speech. Can you make your amendment first? This and Martin has my only copy. 
Hey, it's on the screen. You okay. can just say you move. You can, right. you can you say can you move, move to, to amend, amend by substitution the... with the text on the screen. Move to amend with the text on the screen. The current way... Is there a second? Hearing none, the item is not before us. Yes. The question is, has there been debate in the negative on this issue? I don't think so, but we had lunch between then and now, so please correct me if I'm wrong. I do not believe so. So given our standing rules, there's a thing. Let me pull it up. Three five. I'm going to I'm gonna rule first. So um <clears throat> For those that don't have the standing rules memorized and are not sure what's happening right now, what was pointed out was that we have a standing rule about if we get to the, if we run out of debate time before stuff has happened, basically. So rule 3.5 says that if debate time expires before either or both sides of the question have had an opportunity for substantive debate, any side that has not had such an opportunity shall have two minutes to be used solely for the purpose of substantive debate. I am not sure, while it, is while it is true that there has not been a speech, a thing that is classified as a speech against about the underlying motion, I'm not sure I agree that there has not been substantive debate on the matter. And so I am going to rule, I'm gonna put it to the body. Do you believe that there has been substantive debate on either or both sides of this res I spoke against it. You spoke against the underlying resolution before there were any amendments. Okay, great. Substantive debate happened. Thank you. That was a long time ago. No, no, no. It's you no. Know. That's an editorial revision. Okay. So I I'm going to summarize where we are cuz a lot of things just happened. Yeah. Okay, so what happened was an amendment by substitution was offered, but it was not seconded, so it is not before us. Then there were questions on whether or not, where we were in debate and whether or not we needed to add time to debate. It has been determined that there was debate on both sides of the question, and therefore we are going to move to a vote because debate time has expired unless there is anybody else wish, wishing to make a motion that would be in order. Yes. Do you have an inquiry? Can you please bring the mic? In the original language, the, the abject apology was to the nominators and the voters. The new language did not include the voters. I'd like to move that the word voters be stuck back in. The word? The nominators and voters is the text in the apology, and so there is no need to amend it to include that. Second line, apologize unreservedly to the nominators and voters of the 2023 Hugo Awards. No, that says nominators, finalists, and winners. The second line of the first paragraph reads, apologizes unreservedly to the nominators and voters. Okay. Okay, we are going to move to a vote unless there is any other item that needs to be addressed. The item that we are voting on is the adoption of D.13 as amended by substitution, the text of which is on the screen. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed, thank you. And the motion passes and is adopted. I'm going to instruct me and the rest of my staff to get this text to um, the folks that run things like wispus.org as well as to 
Glasgow 2024 promotions. I'm not promising anything about what the cons promotion te promotions team is or is not going to do with it because WISFIS and the con are different things, but I'm letting you know that I will make sure they have the text so they can choose to distribute it if they wish to. Okay. Having handled D.13, we are now going to go on to D.14, make them finalists. I don't have my spreadsheet, I just realized. Um, I'm going to recommend a debate time of eight minutes for this item. Is there any objection to eight minutes? There is an objection, okay. So we are going to vote on the debate time of eight minutes. Um, it requires a majority vote. If it doesn't pass, then we get to have fun with debate times for the first time. All those in favor of a debate time of eight minutes, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those against and the debate time of eight minutes is adopted. Okay, um, is one of the makers of the motion here to speak? Yes, there's a point of order. Please state your point at the microphone or have somebody bring the microphone to you. I can manage that for mixed chairperson. My name is Kent Bloom and uh, I, I would like to move to postpone indefinitely. I don't, Actually, I'd like to raise a point of order first. Um, I believe that, that it is beyond the authority of this um, body to tell someone that they were or were not uh, a, uh, no a nominee. And that if we adopt this, we have done nothing. And if we don't adopt this, we have done nothing. And therefore, it is definitely out of order. Okay. So the point of order is that this is beyond the powers of the business meeting. I will note that the creation of the Formalization of, long list, yeah. Formalization of Long List Entries Committee, sometimes known as the Folly Committee, was created purely by a resolution of the business meeting. Okay. Since there's some history here, and I am a member of the Folly Committee, the Folly Committee was created by Bruce Pels as a personal project and has been endorsed repeatedly by this body, but is not a creature of this body. Okay. I take the correction. Is Mr. Eastlake here? You have an amendment that you're planning to offer, correct? Uh, Donald Eastlake, he, him. Uh, I believe this. Uh, <coughs> I'm not asking you to make the amendment. I'm just clarifying your plan on making it right because I have a point of order I have to rule on. Yes, and, and I would tweak that point of order <laughs> by saying that this is inconsistent with the Constitution, which specifies who's finalists. And uh, you can't just do something which is, you know, make somebody a finalist when the Constitution specifies how you become a finalist. Well, you can't just do that by a majority vote at a resolution. Okay. I agree with the point. However, here's the issue. If I rule it out of order, it's gone, and I am aware of an amendment that would bring it out of that problem. So... Give me a second. I'm going to ask the member if he would be willing. Don, can you move so I can see the member? Sorry. Um, I'm going to ask the member if you would be willing to reserve the point of order until after the amendment that Mr. Eastlake plans to offer to be ruled on after that if still necessary. Okay, the point of order has been reserved. Okay, I'm going to recognize Mr. Eastlake for an amendment. <clears throat> um, so I have an amendment proposed which would uh, make this uh, all valid. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, so I'm not sure if it maybe needs a suspension of the rules to do this. But what it would do is it would basically split this into two pieces. One is a resolution, basically naming the same works and essentially saying that they ought to be finalists. And the other is an amendment to the Constitution, which will be coming up the first time, which specifically authorizes the business meeting to make new finalists for the previous year by a two-thirds vote, the same way we do for extending Hugo eligibilities. And I have forwarded to the business uh, meeting staff the text of these pieces in advance. So if, I don't know if they... It's on the screen. Okay. Well, there it is. And... Uh, so I move this as an amendment by substitution. Second. Or 
and if necessary, also move to suspend the rules to allow that as part of the same motion. <laughs> um, okay, so the motion has been moved and seconded. Um, I think we're out of the preliminary business meeting, so I think it's in order. We don't need to suspend the rules. Um, nobody's yelling at me that I'm wrong, so I'm going to say that that's okay. Um, okay, so it has been moved and seconded to amend by substitution. So this is two items that we are going to take up together. We are going to con consider them to be sort of the same item, um, unless somebody objects to that. So it is an amendment to the WISFIS Constitution that inserts text in 3-4 that reads, the WISFIS business meeting may, by a three-quarters vote, determine that a potential nominee for the Hugo Award or another award administered by WISFIS was improperly declared ineligible and should have been a finalist on the previous year's ballot and by such a vote give that potential nominee the status of being a finalist for that previous year provided that such three-quarter votes pass at the 2024 and 2025 business meetings shall be effective if this constitutional amendment is passed in 2024 and ratified in 2025. So just to be really clear what it's saying is constitutional amendments take uh, two years to happen. So it's going to take two years to be in effect, but we can have pre voted on the resolution to do the thing so that it's immediately in effect if it passes. That resolution is resolve that the following works, the following were improperly declared eligible and should have been award finalists in 2023. They are given that status effective upon the ratification of the belated finalist constitutional amendment. And then there is that list which has been read previously. Do you need me to read the list? I did not hear a yes, so I'm not going to read the full list. That is the item before us that has been moved and seconded. Do we have privileged matters? Uh, one point of order. So, uh, Mixed chairperson, how exactly will this vote work if there is a single item, given that there is a simple majority on the WISFIS Constitution matter, and there is a three quarters requirement for the resolution, it wouldn't work is thing. your is a good point. Yep. No, thanks. Yeah. So we will vote on we're going to so pending whatever happens in the next little bit of time, my, what we would do is if we were to move to a vote on this right this second, we would vote on the um, adoption of the constitutional amendment and then if that passes, vote on the adoption of the resolution because it doesn't seem useful to vote on the resolution if we reject the amendment. Okay, yes. Request for information. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, Ray Richards, he, him. Um, I am hoping you can clarify my understanding of the Constitution, but Given that this constitutional amendment, if passed, would need to be re-ratified in 2025 and would not take effect until then, and given that the constitutional amendment, as proposed, allows them to reinsert finalists for the previous year only, am I correct in thinking it could not, therefore, reinsert finalists for 2023, which would be two years prior to the coming into force of this constitutional amendment? No, because the proviso is is handling that. It's saying that the 2024 business meeting is addressing the previous year, which is 2023. And so that if the amendment passes, then that thing that happened in 2024 um, is effective. Thank you very much. That sets my mind at rest. Okay. Okay. I, I hear a point of order and a point of information. I will recognize the point of order. Dave Wallace, he, him. Uh, the resolution, as currently stated there, says these works were in, uh, improperly declared eligible. I believe that should read improperly declared ineligible. It says improperly declared ineligible. I may have said eligible. My apologies. The text that I see says improperly declared ineligible. Okay, there was a request for information. Okay, we're good. Okay, are there any other privileged matters? 
Okay, you've been standing. Is it privileged? Okay. Uh, Andrew Adams, he, him. Uh, pardon me for this mixed chairperson, but I was generally of the uh, uh, belief that our constitution does not allow us to retroactively change our constitutional rules. That was something I have, I have certainly heard ruled at previous meetings that we cannot do, and this strikes me as being at least perilously close to this. Um, I would defer to the, the expertise of the member making the motion, but I would just like the chair to confirm that they have considered that point before ruling this in order. Mr. Uslick, can you come here? I want to ask you a question. Okay, so the presiding officer will admit that they do not have an encyclopedic uh, data bank of every possible constitutional amendment that has ever been proposed. I'm just going to start off by saying that. It is my understanding that when such rulings have been made in the past, they have not included a combination of both this sort of proviso and a incredibly narrow remit. And so, therefore, I would say that this is in order, given those two facts. Okay. Are there any other privileged items? Request for information. Please move to a microphone. Given the way this is structured, given that we have appointed a committee to investigate the Yugos, should, by some chance, additional information regarding what happened in 2023 be developed, would it be permissible, the way this is worded, to further allow additional nominees, non-nominees, whatever you want to call them, to be added to this list, as or this list to be revised if it turned out that there was something else that should have been ahead of this. I would rule that, so that is a ruling that the 2025 chair would need to make at that time. Given that that is presumably me, I, like, no, I'm sorry, I, I cannot make hypothetical rulings about the future, I just can't. I may want to, but I've been down that road before and it's a bad idea. The question is, can we never add any other finalists by this provide that this proviso is about the resolution that is passed at the 2024 business meeting. The text as written, anything past the 2025 business meeting would need to be about the previous year's ballot, would need to be about the 2024 ballot. So yeah, I, the a resolution that is passed this year would be about the 2023 finalists. The text, as it is written, to my understanding, does not include the ability to edit the 23 finalists in 25. And the maker of the motion is nodding, indicating that is also their intention. And he tends to write things that mean what he intends. So, okay, I see multiple speaking cards. Can you just say what are you wanting? Just like point of order request for information. What do you want? Uh, I want to just no, I just need the name. Point of order request for information or parliamentary inquiry. Do you have a question? The the you want to appeal the ruling of the chair? Okay, then I'm gonna take that up. I don't think you can appeal this ruling because it's about. It's, it's, I'm not ruling on. You can't say on the, on the constitutional amendment on what can be. 
the member is saying that there's not, the, the text of the resolution says the previous year's ballot. That a business meeting, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I get that. Okay, what were you wanting to do? There's a question. What's in the back? That is not a privileged matter. Were there any other privileged motions? What was yours? Okay, a question. We're going to start with this question. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a what was yours? That's a privilege. Uh, maybe we'll try. Okay, question, uh, question for the room. Are we okay losing the list of finalists from the screen? Of the the from list of na award awardees from the screen because I think we know these. Okay, what is your question? My question goes along with the other, but not a future thing. Does this resolution should the committee find that things were not improperly declared ineligible? Would this still be in? You know, could we change that next year? You know, if the if the investigation committee says no, these were. This was properly right. decided. Yeah, so. We've gotten ourselves stuck. Right. Because ratification of the item would be up at 25, if there are changes that need to be made to the amendment or to the consequences of the amendment, that would, I believe, be in order in 25. I want to be clear. You can't come to me in 25 and say you ruled that this was in order because I didn't issue a ruling in 25. This is my understanding of the parliamentary process. Thank you. Okay. There was a question over there. Kate Secor, she, her. I know we've covered this, but I'm still confused. So let me lay out the scenario that would answer my question. Maybe that'll help. I am one of the people that was named. This gets passed. Do I get to put I was a finalist on my resume now or do I have to wait until next year? You would need to wait until next year. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other privileged questions? Okay. Mr. Eclusive, did you speak in favor? Do you want to if you didn't? This is an amendment, so it has five minutes, but I don't. Uh, I believe we already counted some speech in favor against the time. Well, yeah, like how much time is remaining on the entire item to be distributed? Um, let's see, we'll do we have the full five minutes to distribute? No, I won't do the math momentarily. Okay, we have some, so make your speech. Oh, Donald Eastlake, he, him. Uh, this is essentially the only way you can do this, in my opinion, because the Constitution specifies who's finalists, and so you need to change the Constitution to establish this mechanism. So if you want to do this, this is the way to do it. Okay, thank you. Is there a speech against? I'm going to recognize in the back. Lisa Hertel, she, they. I believe if we change the previous year to a previous year, it resolves everything. So I would like to make that a uh, minor amendment, motion, change, whatever. I'm sorry, please say that again. Change the, f the phrases the previous year to a previous year. Okay. As we've established, because it's an amendment by substitution, an amendment is in order. So the amendment is to change the word the previous year to a previous year, to just strike the and insert a um, before right there. Okay, is there a second? I do not hear a second and so the, okay, there is a second. Okay, so, the, I, so what is before us is an amendment to the amendment by substitution to change it from a finalist on the previous year's ballot to a finalist on a previous year's ballot. I'm gonna assume that since the member left, they don't wish to say anything additional about their amendment, okay. We had... That is 
the, the point of inquiry was that we're on the constitutional part of it, and we are. So I believe we have roughly like a minute 50 in total to distribute amongst the two sides of this amendment. Okay. Is there a speech against? <laughs> Perry Ann. Lurie Sheher. Well, I agree that that would solve one problem. That leaves it open-ended, like we could go back to 1947 and say we didn't like those, and I don't think we should open that up. Okay, thank you. That was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Elspeth Kovar, she, her. I think this is a very bad reason for amending the Constitution. I think we are being, we are reacting emotionally. Just, just. Okay, I'm. Okay. I thought we were still talking about the. This was. The which is part of it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I've gotten confused by now. Thank you. Okay. Is there a speech in favor? While I agree with the previous speaker, uh, we can fix that by requiring two successive business meetings in order to do this. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Madam, excuse me, mixed chairperson. Uh, my name is Kent Bloom and I am very much opposed to revisionist histories of any kind and particularly open-ended ones. There are plenty of controversies in the history of the Hugo Awards going back to 1955 where it is alleged that the committee substituted their judgment for the judgment of the voters. Um, I'd really like to not have to revisit those things, especially since in many cases we have no real evidence, only suspicions and rumors. And I think we should not have open-ended back history revision. I don't think we should have any, but certainly not open-ended ones. Okay, that was a speech against. Where are we on time? Uh, we have one minute remaining, four and 19 seconds remaining against. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in? That is not in order. Sorry. It is not in order because while we allow amendments to amendments when the original one was by substitution, amendments to amendments to amendments are never in order. Sorry. No, it, there's no reason to, I, that was not meant as a joke. It was a statement of fact. Um, is there a speech in favor? Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? While I like the intent of this thing, by saying that the business meeting by a three-quarters vote can declare something that may not have really happened happen, I don't think we should allow that because then who knows who shows up in a business meeting and decides that Isaac Asimov didn't win a Yugo or whatever. We're at time. Hold on. I, I understand. I, I am taking the member's speech because he was trying to be brief as being specifically about the amendment and not about the idea of doing that in general. I understand the issue, but I believe that was just caused by the necessary brevity. So it was germane. Okay, time for debate and against has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. The item before us is the amendment to the amendment by substitution, which would change it from should have been a finalist on the previous year's ballot to 
should have been a finalist on a previous year's ballot. So should the amendment be adopted, it would change the to a. Are we clear on what we are voting on? Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, and the amendment does not pass. And so we are back to the amendment by substitution as not as, as originally proposed. Time for debate has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to make a privileged motion or an, yes? Okay, you can make the amendment. It will not be debatable as time for debate has elapsed. Andrew Adams, which chairperson. I have in the past been the person on the um, Hugo administration. <coughs> hmm? Name. Andrew Adams, he, he him. Um, I have in the past been the person. Uh, okay, a amendment. Okay, um, I will say members are allowed to give like a brief couple sentences to explain like the purpose of the amendment. So since uh, like half a sentence had elapsed, it, it's allowed. I have been the person checking whether somebody wishes to be a finalist. This does not do so. I would like to uh, amend somewhere appropriate with their permission. Okay, so the amendment would be to add uh, with their permission, I would say after the status of being a finalist. Yeah, that works. By such a vote, with their permission, give them give that potential nominee the status of being a finalist. Does that meet your okay? That is so. What is before us is an amendment to the amendment by substitution to insert with their permission, so that it would read um, by and by such a vote with their permission, give that potential nee the status of nominee the status of being a finalist for that previous year. There is a second. Debate time has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to make a privileged motion? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, and the amendment passes. We are going to give the secretary a moment. Yeah, and by such a vote with their permission. Okay, so we are now going to vote on the amendment by substitution as amended. Yes. We have another motion to amend. Thank you, mixed chairperson. Kendall Bullen, he, him. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to turn around to look at it. Um, I move to amend to change on the previous year's ballot to on the previous two years ballot um, and I can explain if it's not obvious why I'm okay it. Um, so the amendment is to change the previous year's ballot to the previous two years ballot is there a second hearing none the amendment is not before us and we are back to the amendment by substitution is there anyone else Okay, we are going to move to a vote on the amendment by substitution as amended to include the permission clause. So this is the, um, this, hmm, sorry. This is the motion to adopt the amendment by substitution. One moment. All right, this is, this is the motion to adopt the amendment by substitution, which is the constitutional amendment. Should you adopt this, should you adopt the amendment by substitution, we will then vote on adopting the amendment. Because we still have to do that. Should we adopt the amendment, or sorry, adopt, sorry, adopt the constitutional amendment, there we go, then we will have a vote on the resolution that 
belongs to this as well, which by a three quarters vote, if, if it passes, would then take effect should this constitutional amendment be ratified. Is that clear? Okay. So we are going to vote on the amendment by substitution. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, and the amendment by substitution passes. The item now before us is the underlying constitutional amendment, which didn't exist before, but now does, that is the text on the screen. While the secretary is doing that, is there anyone who feels that we need to add debate time because there hasn't been substantive debate? You, is that a yes to my question or? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna wait for the secretary to catch up. Okay, I do, I mean, I agree with you. I was just wanting to see if there was a sense that we needed to have the debate. Okay, so given that there has not really been substantive debate against this item, there has been very limited debate for, we are, but there has been one. So we are going to add two minutes of debate time per our standing rules for speeches against this constitutional amendment. And it would also be germane getting into the specifics of individual items in the resolution would not be germane. So it's really just about the constitutional amendment right now to be clear. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Mixed chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom. And again, I do not approve of revisionist history and I do not approve with interfering with the actions which we irrevocably delegate first to the WorldCon committee and not reserved to this body, and second, which the WorldCon committees consistently delegate to a subcommittee, which is the, the organization, uh, the collection of people who determines who is a finalist. I do not think it is appropriate for us to determine who, who is or is not a finalist in a, any particular Hugo Award, uh, and I, I think we need to respect the boundaries between the WorldCon which is an independent organization to which we have delegated almost all of our authority and the business meeting. Okay. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? How much time is remaining? We have one minute and six seconds. Uh, Olav Rockney. Uh, Ms. Mix, mix chairperson, I just simply do not believe that it does anyone any good to create a second pathway to becoming a Hugo finalist. It, this can be used to come to uh, con confirm this status on people uh, who have no business being Hugo finalists. Uh, it, it doesn't fix the mistake. It just creates an avenue for future mistakes. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? We have 30 seconds remaining. Linda Robinette, she, her, I agree with the revisionist history. I am not a literature or drama critic or game critic. Where would I, as a, a uh, business meeting attendee, have any right to add a name to the finalists? Okay, how much time is remaining? Is that for or against? That was a speech okay. against because only speeches against are in order right now. One moment, what did you say? 16 seconds. Okay, what is the inquiry? Would it be a, in order to approve? Would a motion to amend be in order? Yes. Can I, ask a question? I have not recognized you. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? No, I'm sorry. I had recognized. Are you okay with? I had recognized Joshua. I'm sorry. It wasn't clear. 
Yeah. My apologies, Elspeth. Um, Joshua Chronicles, he, him. Um, I move to um, amend uh, requiring ra um, a extra year of ratification. Okay, so the m is there a second? Okay, yeah. hearing none, the amendment is not before us. So I believe, or do we have any time left? I believe that would fully lapse it. We, we, yeah, we have nine seconds. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay. I don't know if the language is permitted, but we don't fuck around with the Constitution. For unless there's a specific reason. Time. This is not the chair who's going to call somebody out of order for using that word. Sorry. Um, okay. Time against has elapsed. Are you you're wishing to make an amendment? Are you are you wishing to be recognized? Yes. Okay. Please state your amendment. Come to the microphone. That is in order. Jason Spitzer, he, him. I realize this may not be debatable due to time having elapsed, but I would motion to amend, having heard arguments on both sides, instead of trying to set a new policy. Please state the text of your amendment. Uh, then I'm going to need a lot of help because I, I can't read that, and I can read this off this if it hasn't been changed, but I'm, I'm kind of lost. What are you trying to accomplish but, uh, with that's your amendment? What I, that's what I was going to say. Instead of setting a new policy that would say any business meeting can go back retroactively, we could amend this, I would need help with the language, but to do this one time. There was a major issue, we acknowledge that, okay, no, no finger pointing, but why don't we move to... So, I wanna be clear, so you are wishing to make an amendment that makes this new part of the Constitution only be in effect for a resolution adopted at the 2024 business meeting? Uh, I. I would, I would, well, 24 or 25 it has to be ratified, okay. but I would, I would suggest it might then not be in the Constitution, right? That, that's, I need to know, I am trying to understand yes. the intention of your amendment so that I can find out if there is a second so that we can figure out if we need to workshop the language. So, understood. The intention of your amendment is to change it so that. So it is only resolutions adopted at the 2024 or 2025 business meeting that would have this power, and then the ability would go away. Is that your intention? Essentially, yes. It would be to affect the finalist is list. Is that for your intention? I, okay. okay fine. It, it, yes, no is yes. okay, but essentially isn't. I, I, underst I understand. Then, yes, but I, all I'm trying to clarify to make sure we're on the same page is that my goal would be to adjust the list if we do so for the 2023 finalists and that's all so it seems like yes okay I just, I just want to make sure we're on the same page because again I'm kind of lost thank you yes yeah. okay right, thank you so that is your intention and you would the it would even the member is clarifying that even though the 25 business meeting would have power to have resolutions it would only be for 23 finalists yes, yes. okay yes is there a second for this amendment. Okay. There is a second. So. I'm aware that we need wording. I'm aware. There is a point of order or possibly inquiry. Please. Come to the microphone and state it. Hello. So she, her, um, I, point of order or inquiry being that I am not sure if uh, potentially the amendment that is being um, proposed by uh, the person here is necessary because I believe we are currently voting on whether to have an amendment 
And then if we decide to not have an amendment, we are still talking about whether or not to do this for this year. So if we decide to not amend the constitution, yes. we just vote against. We just vote against on this, and then we're still talking about just this. No. Year. So the the amendment by substitution was adopted. So the original resolution, make them finalists, has gone away because the amendment by substitution was adopted. So what is now before us is whether we will oh. adopt that amendment to the constitution. Mm. So if the amendment to adopt to the con sorry, if the amendment to the constitution is not adopted, there is not an additional thing that does okay. something similar currently before us. That that was very unclear. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that that is exactly why a parliamentary inquiry exists. Thank you for asking. I'm sure you were not the only person unclear. Like this is confusing. So The amendment by substitution was adopted. The question currently before us is whether to adopt the amendment to the constitution, the new constitutional amendment. So the underlying resolution that was originally submitted is not there anymore. Okay. We're going to give us two minutes to confer one moment. While we figure out what to do this, I have a thing that I've been meaning to say since this morning and I just keep forgetting, which is that today's coffee service was provided by Kevin Sonny and we are very appreciative for it. <laughs> I keep getting distracted, I'm sorry. No, no, Jesse, but that only applies to 25. Okay, hold on, hold on. What were you asking? <sighs> yeah, um, I, I would just, I was really hoping we we're gonna get this finished before then. Okay, yeah, we're in recess for 10 minutes. 10 minutes exactly. You are gonna be back here at 2.07.
This is your one minute warning. We will be back in order in one minute. Okay, we are back in order. Please take your seats and cease conversations. Okay, we are back from recess. We have text on the screen of the amendment, which will be to add at the end, provided further that the authority under this section shall only be authorized to resolutions adopted by the 2024 business meeting. We are out of debate time. So we are going to move, so I'm going to summarize what's happening, but then we're going to move to a vote. So the amendment by substitution to D.14 from Mr. Eastlake was adopted. So the original D.14 no longer, are we okay? No, I just want to make sure everyone's okay. Okay. The original D.14 no longer exists. And the item before us is the amendment by substitution, or sorry, the, the constitutional amendment from Mr. Eastlake. There has been an amendment offered to that constitutional amendment, which is to add the text on the screen to the end of it. Once we have determined whether we are adopting the new constitutional amendment proposed by Donald Eastlake, at that time, should it pass, that's when votes on resolutions will happen. But first, we need to determine if we are amending that constitutional amendment. Do you have a question? I have a technical question. Is, is it correct to say adopting the amendment posted by Donald Eastlake like giving it new procedure and capacity? We are doing the thing that adopting a new constitutional amendment at a meeting always means, which is the first year. Yes. Okay, we are getting reports that the stream is not receiving video. Okay, you're on, sorry, I can. We are going to work on the live stream issues. I'm going to say that given that, okay, we're, we're good. Okay. So the item before us is the amendment to the constitutional amendment proposed by Donald Eastlake, which is to add the text on the screen to the end of the amendment. Are we clear on what the item before us is? Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, I'm going to say the amendment did not pass. There has been a call for a division. Per our standing rules, it takes a request of 10% of the body for a division. So look, if, if I'm unclear on whether this is 10%, we'll move to the division. But if only two people raise their hands, we're not basically. Okay. If you are in favor 
of a standing counted vote, please raise the hand. Okay, I'm gonna say that's enough. And we are going to move to division. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna, I'm gonna call for the votes in favor to stand. We will count off and the floor manager will help you do that and make sure that we're counting correctly. And then we'll move to the votes against. So all those in favor of the amendment, please rise. Is there anyone else wishing to vote in favor who was not counted? Okay, is there anyone else? Okay. All those in opposed, please rise. Okay, this is one so that Martin can one, sit down. Two. Is there anybody else wishing to vote against who has not counted? Okay, by a vote of 22 to 34, the amendment does not pass. We are back to the first year of adoption of the constitutional amendment proposed by Donald Eastlake. Yes. Okay, the question has been called. As a reminder, when we call the question, it's and not just debate, but subsidiary and moment, Subsidiary motions like amendments requires a two thirds vote. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, the motion passes and the question has been called. So we are going to move to a vote. I'm going to, mm, I'm going to rule that that included the resolution that is a part of this as well. Um, is there an objection to that ruling? Okay. That's fair. Well, this isn't an appeal. Okay, so the item that we are the, the item that we are voting on is the constitutional amendment proposed by Donald Eastlake. The text of which is on the screen. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against. Thank you. And the motion passes. So the next item that is before us is the resolution that was a part of this, which is now on the screen. We can only get it so big because it's not resizable in the horizontal direction. Okay. I'm going to recommend a debate time of four minutes for this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Does the maker of the motion wish to speak in favor of it? No, that's you, yes. Yeah, you can't do it unless you want to suspend the rules, but. Okay, the motion to suspend the rules and call the question has been moved and seconded. Since both of these require a two thirds vote and is ne are neither debatable nor amendable, I will take it up as one vote. So if you are voting in favor, you are voting in favor of suspending the rules and calling the question. And if it passes, the question will be called. All those in favor of suspending the rules and calling the question, raise the hand. Thank you. 
All those against, thank you. And the motion passes, and so we will move immediately to a vote on the resolution that is before us, which we're gonna call D dot, D14B, love it. D14B, um, belated finalist resolution, the text of which is before you. This will require a three quarters vote. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against, and the motion passes. Okay. And so this resolution is passed. We have, Linda, I know we have the text of it. Okay. 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 So, we have dispensed with our standing rule changes and resolutions, and we are now going to move to constitutional amendments. <laughs> the chair is going to say the thing that they were going to say first, if that's okay. Okay. Given the amount of time available to us, even before we started, business meeting staff created some new rules that were going to allow us to figure out which things we wanted to postpone indefinitely or object to consideration to hopefully determine the size of the stack before us in a more expedient manner than we are normally able to do so. Those are the rules that are listed on page six and seven of the agenda. That is the item that would now be before us. In order to make things move quicker, I do have a couple changes to those rules that I was going to ask unanimous consent for. I will now hear the member wishing to reorder the agenda. I will note that I am allowing this because Taking up items out of order is not in order when we are in the first pass. We are not yet in it, and I am trying to not steamroll the body. Oh, oh. I'm being told I'm not doing that. Okay. So, the rules of the first pass, because I still have yet to be given a better name for it, are that what will not be in order is debate on the main motion, amendments, taking up out of order and postponing until a definite time. What I would like to ask unanimous, because the preliminary business meeting, which we are no longer in, cannot refer things to committee unless it reports back to another main business meeting. We are no longer in the preliminary business meeting, which is when we thought this was going to happen. Given that, I would like to ask unanimous consent of the body to allow the motion to refer to committee to report back next year, not to a committee of the whole during this first pass, but just to refer to committee to report back next year. Is there unanimous consent to the body to allow for that rule change? Okay, I don't hear any objections. Further, I would like to ask unanimous consent of the body that any motions to refer to committee, as well as the motion to postpone indefinitely, be given a debate time of two minutes by default. Our standing rules normally allow four minutes for postponed indefinitely. So I'm suggesting that we change that to two and that also that is what would be assigned to the motion to refer to committee. Is there any objection to that default debate time? Okay, hearing none, we are going to start moving through the first pass. So this does not affect business passed on because we can't do most of these things to those. So the first new constitutional amendment is F.1 missing in action on page 28. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion about this amendment? Yeah. So to be clear, the motions that we would be expecting to hear would be a motion to postpone indefinitely and object to consideration to refer to a committee to report back next year. There are other things that would be allowed, but those are sort of the big three we're expecting. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? Okay, hearing none, we're going to move to F.2 the way we were. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion about this item? Okay, 
Hearing none, we're going to move on to F.3, required license agreement. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? Okay. F.4, MPC procedures. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? A motion to amend is not in order. F.5, transparency and Hugo administration. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? Um, I'm going to recognize the gentleman in the back. Okay, the motion has been made by Lou Walkoff to refer this to the Hugo Process Committee. This is assigned a bit debate time of two minutes by default. I will, and it has been seconded. I will remind people this is, I want to be clear, this is not a commentary on the specific referral. This is a reminder I meant to give you a little bit ago. You don't always have to use the debate time. Is there, do you wish to speak in favor of the motion to refer or do you believe it speaks for itself? You do need a microphone if you're making a speech. We've got any number of amendments, some of which contradict each other uh, re regarding, uh, basically in reaction to Chengdu, uh, it's better to con consider them as a whole slowly and rationally than to go through, than to uh, jump on and do them uh, today or this at this business meeting or tomorrow's or, so, or Monday's. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the referral to committee? It would be to the Hugo Process Study Committee that was created. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of referring F.5, Transparency and Hugo Administration, to the Hugo Award Process Committee that was created to report back next year, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those opposed. And the motion has been referred. Our next item is F.6. Okay, one moment. Okay, the next item is F.6, Independent Hugo Administration. Is there anyone, okay, what, what kind of motion do you wish to make? Okay, it has been referred to be moved to the Hugo Award Process Committee, I, which has been seconded. Do you wish to speak to the motion? Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against? The motion to refer to the Hugo Process Study Committee. I've given it like three different names, but I trust the secretary to call it the right thing. You wish to speak against? Okay. Give the secretary a moment. Yeah, it's, yeah. So yeah, Chris referred it, Chris moved to refer it to committee, and then Dave Wallace is speaking against. Dave Wallace, he, him. Uh, I oppose the move to refer it to committee because I think we should postpone it indefinitely instead. And uh, I can speak to why, or do mm -hmm. I? You would need to do that if it failed and there was a motion to postpone indefinitely. Fair enough. Okay. That was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Joshua Cronengold, he, him. Um, uh, this uh, creating a WISFA. Um, and thereby insulating from the host country is the only way to guarantee uh, that a host country, no, this is still Jermaine, um, that uh, the only way to guarantee that the host country can't, what? 
Yeah, because the item before, yes, because the item before us is, while the debate on postponed indefinitely can go into the merits of the motion, the debate on a referral to committee needs to be about whether or not to refer it to committee, not the merits of the main motion. However, I do understand that the speaker is in part responding to the intention stated by the other speaker to move to postpone indefinitely. And so, so long as the speaker keeps their comments quite narrow, I will consider it to be germane. This is a good idea, but we need to send it to a committee to work on it first. Thank you. That was a speech in favor of referral to committee. Is there any, do we still have time again? We have plenty of time, we have 46 seconds. <laughs> Is there anyone else wishing to speak against the motion to refer to committee? Seeing none, is there, are you wanting to speak against? Okay. I'm against this because the Hugo committee already has more than enough to do and this is very, very complicated. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Kate Secor, she, her. I'm actually the maker of the underlying motion. Um, I'm fine with it going to committee. I would rather that we had passed it this year, but, and I think it's a good idea, but I'd rather have it discussed than just killed dead. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? So were you wanting to speak against or? Okay, how much time is remaining? Uh, we have 37 seconds against. Okay. Journey dash off. I really, really want this killed. The labeling is wrong. The Mark Protection Committee doesn't need it. So referring to mid to committee will not allow us to kill it completely. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor of referral? How much time is remaining on the pro side? 27 seconds. Thank you. Thanks, Chairperson. Uh, Kendall Bullen, he, him. Uh, I just wanted to point out that the remit of the committee earlier seems to cover exactly this. In independent Hugo administration. So it makes total sense to refer. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, once the secretary is ready, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of referring F.6 to the Hugo Process Study Committee, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, and the motion passes, and F.6 is referred to the Hugo Process Study Committee to report back next year. The next item before us is F.7, no illegal exclusions, found on page 38. What kind of motion do you wish to make? Uh, motion, to refer. motion to refer to what committee? Uh, there. I would like to move to refer seven, eight, nine, nineteen, and twenty to that committee. I'm going to rule that out of order for the rationale that, like I said in the agenda. I couldn't think of every possibility, but things that are likely to ensnare the committee, I'm going to rule out of order. I understand that the intention was not to be dilatory. However, it is my experience that when we attempt to do things like this, we spend far longer spending time on, well, I wanna move these two, but not these three, and I wanna move these four, but not this one. And so I am going to rule that out of order. Do you still wish to refer F.7 to the Hugo Process Study Committee? Okay, is there a second? Okay, do you wish to speak to it? Is there anybody who wishes to speak against? Is there anybody who wishes to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. 
If you are in favor of referring F.7 to the Hugo Process Study Committee, please raise the hand. And those against, thank you, and the motion passes. F.7 is referred to the Hugo Process Study Committee to report back next year. The next item is F.8. Motion has been made to refer to the Hugo Process Study Committee. Is there a second? second? Do you wish to speak to it? No. Does anybody wish to speak against? Does anybody else wish to speak in favor? We will move to a vote. All those in favor of referring F.8 to the Hugo Process <laughs> Study Committee to report back next year, raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Thank you. And it is referred. That's okay. Yep. You can just copy and paste Cliff Don move to refer and it passed. F7 and F8, and then I just want to thank everyone for giving the secretary grace for using a computer that is not hers and an operating system that she is not used to. Yes, the the secretary pro tem, correct. Are we good to move on or? Okay, so the next item before us is F.9. I'm going to recognize Joshua. Okay, it is moved and seconded to refer to the Hugo Process Study Committee. Do you wish to speak to it? Nope. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Okay. Right, but I recognize the one over here. Yes. Uh, Chris Rose, he, him, Mr. Chairman. I wish to speak against it because I would like to object to consideration of this one rather than refer it to committee. Okay. That was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Well, no, but okay. Yeah, except technically you're not allowed to object because is there an objection to suspending the rules to allow the member to object to consideration on the underlying motion right now? Hearing none, there is an object to consideration. This requires by our standing rules a three quarter vote. It is not debatable and it is not amendable. An object to consideration immediately kills the item before us. All those in favor um, of rejecting the consideration F.9, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, that was not a three quarters vote and it does not pass. So I'm gonna say we're back to the motion to refer. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wish wishing to speak against? So we will move to a vote. All those in favor of referring to the Hugo Process Study Committee, F.9, to the Hugo Process Study Committee to report back next year, raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the motion passes. Yes. We can, so we can refer things to committees even if it was not in the committee's original remit. Okay. Okay, so the next item before us is F.10. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? There's a request for information. Please bring the microphone. Lou Walkoff, he, him. I'd like to know if it's possible to send part of a motion 
to a committee? That the parliamentary inquiry is if it is possible to send part of a motion to committee. It is not unless the question is divided. Kate Secor, do you wish to make a motion? Move to divide the question. Uh, I have provided the division to the table ahead of time, so I'm hoping there's a slide for it. Okay, it, there ah, is, it's yes. on, yes. Okay, um, so I'd like to divide into four pieces. Uh, one that creates the software advisory committee, uh, one that defines when the Worldcon committee becomes active, one that creates the Hugo oversight committee, and one that creates the bid committee licensing agreement. The sub bullets here tell you which part of the original motion would be included in each division. Sorry, it's a complicated motion doing a lot of stuff, so. No, you want to raise the slide. There is, a, there is a second. One moment, because the secretary needs to like copy and paste some things. I'm checking something that I forgot to check earlier. One moment. Motion to divide is not debatable, though it is amendable, just so we're aware. <laughs> I will say that while the motion to amend in any of its forms is not in order, how would they know, right? Like, you can, you can no, but I said that the motion to amend is not in order in any of its forms in the rules. So yeah, I'm going to say that we're just going that the motion to amend the division is not going to be in order per the rules of the first pass. Just so that we're clear on that. Yes. Right. Yeah, so I'm sorry. This is debate and unfortunately the call the the motion to divide is not debatable. I'm sorry. So the parliamentary inquiry is if different things can come up once the question is divided. So yes, we were, we we're going to divide the question and then we will see if there are any things that people want to do to the divided questions. During the first pass, the motion to amend is not in order, however, if somebody wants to postpone it indefinitely or refer it, it would be in order to say, I don't want to postpone or refer because I have an amendment I want to offer. Okay, so the motion before us is the motion to divide F.10 as shown on the screen. Are we clear on what that division would be? Okay, yes. Please go to the microphone. Todd Dashoff, if we approve the division, do we then immediately go into discussion on the four parts? There is no discussion on the merit of the motion um, in order during the first pass. We would then go into each of the divisions the same way that we have been addressing everything else in the first pass to see if there are any motions that people wish to make that are in order. That is what I meant. I is that, I'm sorry for the okay, is that clear to everyone else? Okay. Did, so if the motion is divided, we will then treat this as four separate things that we will then do the first pass to. Okay. All those in favor of dividing the question, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And the motion is divided. So we are going to first take up F.10.A, which is section, the, the new section 1.9 and the new clause in 4615 in the original F.10. So it's the stuff about the software advisory committee. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? What kind of motion do you wish to make? The motion to postpone indefinitely has been moved and seconded. This gets two minutes of automatic debate time. Do you wish to speak to it? Okay. And as a reminder, the motion to postpone indefinitely will require a two-thirds vote. 
debate can go into the merits of the underlying motion. And if it is postponed indefinitely, it essentially goes away. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion to postpone indefinitely? Yes. Randall Shepard, he, him, MX chairperson. Uh, I have an amendment I want to make to it. I've sent to the business meeting earlier the language uh, in discussion with a key member of who I'd want on the that advisory committee. Uh, I've opted that the simpler solution is to require open source software so we don't run into a situation where we have a Hugo administrator using private, untestable software. That should be testable by anyone in the community, and that's the open software language I sent a business meeting at. Right, we so have it. If it does get, if the amendment okay, does get, okay. Well, made. I'd like that amendment, so then I'm opposed to it right. indefinitely. Okay, so that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the motion postponed indefinitely? Please silence any devices. Kate Secor, she, her. While I am in sympathy with the desire to use open source software, I think that this specific motion is not great, and I don't want us to take it up on the basis that we might be able to pass an amendment when we've got people who want to be here and can't all the time. If the maker of that amendment doesn't show up, we're just going to wind up trying to kill this off later. Let's just kill it now, and we can move a new open source thing later. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay. Uh, we have 26 seconds remaining against. Jack Foy, he, him. Uh, I believe that technology selection uh, is a complex problem that will require institutional expertise and there needs to be a place for that within the society. That was a speech against. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor of postponing indefinitely? Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Were you wanting to or are you good? Okay. Seeing no more speakers, we will move to a vote on postponing F.10.A, which is the software advisory, advisory pieces, moving to postpone that indefinitely. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? That is not a two-thirds majority. I did count, y'all. Um, so it does not pass, and it is not postponed indefinitely. Is there any other motion related to F.10.A that somebody wishes to make? The, just really quickly, amend is in an order, just so that you're aware. <laughs> Okay, the motion has been, which committee? The Hugo Award Process Study Committee. Okay, the motion has been made to refer to the Hugo Award Process Study Committee. Is there a second with the clarification of the committee? Second. It has been seconded. Do you wish to speak to it? Okay, is there anybody wishing to speak against? I'm gonna recognize Chris Rose. Chris Rose, he, him, uh, MX chairperson, the business meeting. I'm the current author of the act of Hugo software that's being used today and the, for the sub subsequent few years. I'm also the author of the amendment that Randall proposed. Uh, I don't think that referring it to the committee is going to help. I think we can deal with it in this business meeting and clarify it according to the requirements that I think I've set forth there. Okay, that was a motion, or a motion, a speech against referring to committee. Is there a speech in favor? Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Ron Oaks, he, him. Like Chris, I have also written uh, Hugo 
award database and software that was used for five world counts over the last 15, 20 years. And this is not a Hugo Award problem. This is a technical problem, a computer problem. It needs to be discussed either here or killed here and then handed off to technically competent people to be discussed. It is not the same as the Hugo Award problems. Okay, that was a speech against referral to committee. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? There are 10 seconds remaining. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Marianne. But yeah. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, can you hear me now? You're good. Perry and Lurie, she, her. This doesn't just talk about Hugo software. It also talks about site selection and other things. And so it's not appropriate to refer it to the Hugo process committee. For time. What is the, is there a point of order? Okay, time against referring to committee has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. Those in favor of moving F.10.A to the Hugo Award Process Study Committee, please raise the hand. Thank you, those against. And it is not referred. Is there any other motion somebody's wanting to make on F10A? Seeing not, do you wish to make a motion about F10A? Okay. You're, if you wish to make a motion, that is in order. Okay. Okay. It's still not in order to amend. We have to wait till we get through the first pass. Are you aware of, do you still want to do it? Sorry, that was directed at Randy. Do you still? Okay, it'll be like, <laughs> it'll be tomorrow, if not Monday. Um, okay, we're gonna, we got, we got 13 minutes left. Okay, we are now on F10B, which is the items related, the amendment to section 2.1, defining when a Worldcon committee becomes active. Yes. Do you wish to make a motion? I do. Makes chair, I wish to postpone F10B indefinitely. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded to postpone F10B indefinitely. Is the secretary? It's been moved, seconded, yep. Yep. So this particular section of the amendment leaves a big hole between when one when your WISPAS membership ends at the end and when the next one picks up. And I just don't think that's a great idea. I think we should have it be like a smooth rollover like we have right now. Okay. That was a motion in favor of postponing to def or a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of postponing F10B indefinitely, raise the hand. Thank you, those against. And the motion passes and F10B is postponed indefinitely. We are now going to move to F10C, which is, do you need a moment? Yeah. I mean, if you need to do F10C is the amendments to Article 3, including the new section that is about the Hugo Oversight Committee. Is anyone wishing to make a motion? Okay, what kind of motion? Okay, it has been, it has been moved and seconded to refer by Perry Ann to uh, refer F10C to the Hugo Award Process Study Committee. Do you wish to speak to it? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of referring F10C, raise the hand. Thank you, those against. And the motion is referred. The next item before us is F10D, which is the new clause 4614, which is a bid committee licensing agreement. Is the secretary 
Okay. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion about, okay. What kind of motion do you wish to make? Okay. Mr. Eastlake has moved to postpone indefinitely and there is a second. So you can speak. Mr. Eastlake. Do you wish to speak to it? Okay. Then do that. Uh, <coughs> Donald Eastlake, he, him, uh, this uh, section 4.6.1 here uh, is entirely redundant with F.3, which we've already passed and decided to keep in. Both uh, have the effect of requiring a license agreement for uh, Worldcon bidders and Worldcons. I just want to clarify that for the body that when he said that we have passed F.3, he means that we haven't killed it. Oh, yeah, d first pass. We, we didn't kill it. <laughs> yeah, okay. That was a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. As a reminder, this is a two thirds vote. All those in favor of postponing F10D ind indefinitely raise the hand. Thank you, all those against. And the motion passes and F10D is postponed indefinitely. We are now going to move to F11, Hugo Administration and Site Selection Monitoring on page 40. Yes. appropriate to refer a single motion to two different committees no. no it is not in order to refer a single motion to two different committees unless the motion is divided <laughs> is the secretary ready for us to continue okay the item before us is f.11 hugo administration and site selection monitoring on page 43 kate secor wishes to make a motion and i will recognize her Mix Chair, I wish to move to divide F.11 into two pieces, uh, one to cover the Hugo Subcommittee delegation mandate and one to cover the new Hugo Administration and Site Selection Monitoring Committee. Okay, the motion to divide has been moved and seconded. So it is to divide the question into two parts. The first one would be the first chunk of text, which is 3.13 and the second would be the second chunk of text. Um, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So the motion to divide, we've decided is neither debatable nor amendable. Yeah. Okay, hold on. What is your item? Okay, so. Okay, one moment. So first of all, we have a request to divide it differently. That would be an amendment and not be in order. We have a point of order that these are entangled and cannot be divided. Give me a moment to refresh myself on what all this has. Let me make sure I understand this. Yes, so you want to divide the, the 3.13 would be one portion and then section 5.X would be the a second motion? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because it's because it's a required work on to go to a subcommittee, but it's not required in order to approve the administration. Yeah. Okay, so I agree with the motion that these are entangled. The language in the um, second paragraph of the new F dot X is talking about. So basically, this. The Hugo Administration and Site Selection Monitoring does things about the required Worldcon Committee Hugo Award Subcommittee, and it is 3.13 that makes that a required subcommittee as opposed to an option like it currently is. So these are entangled and cannot be divided. So the motion to divide is not in order. And I'm gonna guess that other motions to divide probably aren't in order as well, but if you want to try, we can. Okay, come to the microphone and let me know how you wish to divide it. Ariane Lurie, she, her, I wish to divide it by separating the site selection piece from the Hugo piece. I do not believe that is possible given the phrasing of the motion, it would require it to be rewritten. Okay, what motion do you wish to make? Okay, Kent Bloom has moved to postpone indefinitely. Is there a second? second? 
Okay, do you wish to, Kent Bloom, do you wish to speak to it? Mixed chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom, and I really think that this is, oh, I really think that this is much too complex for us to deal with uh, as a body, and I don't want to be a committee of the whole, or in fact, to even refer it to a committee to report back on Monday. So I think we should simply w wait till next year. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Okay, Mr. Adams in the back. Andrew Adams, he, him, McShearperson, I, while I am um, sympathetic to the previous speaker, I believe we do need to have this discussion. Um, I was planning to uh, propose we go into a quasi committee of the whole to have that discussion. I do not believe we are yet at the point of making a decision on this, but I do believe we need to have an initial discussion. Okay, that was a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Is there anybody else wish, sorry, was that a hand? Yeah. You do wish to speak in favor? Okay. Ron Oaks, he, him. I will note the makers of this proposal is the Mark Protection Committee, who, we, who this body selects pri in expecting their wisdom and knowledge to craft and understand things. And so I believe they have made their best effort to at least make an initial proposal they believe will work and help resolve some of the issues that have come up, especially over the last year. And we Ten should seconds. allow them. No, you can keep going. Okay. Allow them to present their arguments and we should hear it and discuss it and not just throw this in the trash can. Thank you. Okay, so I believe that was a speech against postponing indefinitely. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay. Um, given that the member was, author was recognized to speak in favor and so kind of possibly jumped the line on other people speaking against. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Okay, seeing none, we will move to a vote. Okay, great, okay. All those in favor of postponing F.11 indefinitely, please raise the hand. Thank you, those opposed? And it is not postponed indefinitely. Is there any other motion that somebody wishes to make about F.11? What motion do you wish to make? Is there a second? It has been moved by Lou Walkoff and seconded to refer to the Hugo Process Study Committee. Do you wish to speak to it? You don't have to. Do you wish to? Okay, that's a speech, but I will restate it said that it goes along with everything else we've done so far. Is there anyone wishing to speak against referring to committee? Harry Ann. Harry Ann, Lurie, she, her. Since this also involves site selection, it is not appropriate to refer it to the Hugo Awards Process Committee. Okay, that is a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Okay, well, you are wishing to speak against? Okay. Dave Wallace, he, him. I am just seconding the previous comments that uh, we should hear from the Mark Protection Committee and we can always decide to refer it to a committee after we have had some discussion, but I think that initial discussion is important. Okay, that is, so that was a speech against. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Anybody else? Request for information. We're gonna deal with that after we deal with this, but I gotta at least get this thing done. Um, is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor of the referral to committee? Okay, 
we're going to move to a vote. All those in favor of referring to the Hugo Process Study Committee, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, and it is not referred. I'm going to say that we've exhausted the things we can do to F11 and that we're done with that one. It is 3 p.m. I also saw a hotel person poking their head out of the door, so I think that they may need the room. We are adjourned, and we will continue with finishing the first pass tomorrow because we do need to figure out what is before us before we can like tackle it. So we will see you all at 10 a.m. tomorrow when we're gonna do site selection first actually and then some balloting and then maybe get some stuff done.